Hey Bear, are you guarding the smoker? Hey, welcome back to Tripod's Garage. Today, we're gonna to review the A Smoke Portable Smoker Slash Grill. Is it worth the money? Well, let's find out. Well, <laughs> not exactly a, a fan right now of crowdsourcing, and uh, but I did purchase three items, and, and it's been my only three, actually. My last review of, uh, my last purchase didn't go very well, but I'm hoping this, things will change. I purchased this for actually $150 on when it was on a fire sale. <laughs> fire sale for a smoker. Get it? <laughs> Anyways, um, we were looking for a small smoker um, for a little while. Um, one to possibly go four-wheeling, and, and this kind of fit the bill of our needs. Um, it says it's super portable. It has you know con consistent heating, auto pellet loading. And um, you can see right here how easy it is to fit in the hopper, which is encased inside the unit. Uh, selectable temperature controls. Yeah, it's, it's so far, I mean, it, you know, on paper, well, on the website, it looks like it's a great choice to start out with. I did go with the blue model, and uh, I thought that kind of looked pretty cool. So, yeah, it says that, you know, again, that you could uh, do all these things, barbecue, smoke, sear. Um, but, again, we really want the... You know the smoking option here you can see how it loads all the pellets um, and it regulates the heat so you don't need to babysit as they say your temperature control here and then you have your um, probe meat probe that you can put in with a separate uh, temperature so then that's just telling everything that you can cook and stuff pretty cool oh it says it's easy to clean it even has this nice little fancy uh, drip uh, grease tray here out to the side well, let's go ahead and uh, get this thing assembled, cook some uh, or smoke some of our favorite meats, and see how it turns out. Well, luckily I was home when this arrived because there was no cardboard box surrounding this, so this was right on the front doorstep. A little risky, <laughs> so, but it is what it is. Uh, the packing was pretty darn nice. Uh, it just has these, uh, basically these pieces of cardboard, really rigid pieces of cardboard surrounding the foam and they just slide right off so it's a uh, pretty easy so let's go ahead and take these off and finish the unpacking process the one concern i have is this dial is just like really close to the foam and i just have a feeling that it could just snap that dial right off if it gets bumped Latches on the ends are strong and they're spring-loaded. Um, I don't picture them failing at any particular time. As we open up the lid, you'll see that we have the accessory box on the top and everything nice and secure on the bottom. I think this is packaged very, very well. The box in the lid had the, some nice pellets. Yummy, yummy, yummy. Yeah, store in a dry place. We had the handle with the screws already inserted for uh, saving little bag accessories. The two standoff legs there. A standard power cord. <laughs> One from like a computer. We have our meat probe. And we have our little dripping basket. It's amazing what they fit in that little little box. It's a pretty cool uh, stretch goal that gave you some accessories. And this accessory bag came a nice pair of Mittens, not to be used outside, of course, during the snow, but you probably can. They're very thick and grippy. We also got these stainless steel tongs, pretty nice, spring loaded. Then we got some pork or beef, whatever, shredders. I always wanted to get a pair of those. Underneath the lid was just this uh, information magnet sheet that just tells you what it does. Also, you're provided with the manuals and you know, warranty information. And the assembly instructions are pretty straightforward. All you have to do is unscrew these three screws and then we'll insert the legs. Pretty easy. I really wish the other manufacturer would take note of this. You'll see after they are removed and then put back on, legs are there. These are very sturdy. It is, it is peely time. Ooh, let's, come on, let's peel this. Ah, oh, failed. Uh, um, yeah, this is not going too well at all. Yep, 
this is a failed review as of right now. So let's get a look around of this. This is a square rectangular type box. Um, everything is very solid. I mean, this is really, really well built. Nice spring latches. Um, yeah, I mean, it's the handle's nice and beefy. You got your your trays, and then you have your hopper here. You just push in the button and then lift it up. Nice little slope to let all your wood pellets go down. Nice locking feel. You got a tray on top. And, you know, I don't know how often I'll use it, but it seems like it's uh, very useful. Another tray. And now you have your drip. This is like a drip pan as well as a slider. So you hit, move the slider over the grill slats if you're smoking. So, yeah, I mean, everything looks pretty nice. You can lift this out. Now, this, the slider is just a loose piece of metal, so there's no track on it to keep it in place. It's supposed to be for cleaning. Here's your firebox and your auger right there. And again, this is all electric. So, let's go ahead and slide this back on and slide it back and forth. So, you got these channels here that will go into this groove in the, for the drip tray. Let's go ahead and open up this hopper. I'm going to put in the apple wood pellets that came with the grill. So, uh, you know, I think about half will fit in here. It's a pretty big hopper for a smoker of this size. Now, I, I'm thinking that, you know, I did, you'll see that I flatten these, but I think that you want to keep it a hump, you know, prevent it from um, staying on its side. So, I will have to test that another time don't think you should be flattening it like I do. So, hey, let me know in the comments if that's correct or not. So we're going to go ahead and set this to 225. Now you have this prime button on the upper left. The prime button will um, actually move the auger and help with uh, getting it started faster. Since I'm going to let this heat up for the first time, you know what, and just let it bake for a little while, I'm not going to use the prime. Also, you have Fahrenheit and Celsius that you can choose from as well. All right, let's go ahead and lock and load. Let's get everything closed up here. Now, I it says that it should take about 20 minutes for everything to get up to temperature. So basically, once you start seeing everything smoking and your display reads the correct temperature, we should be good to go. All right, it's all up to temperature. Let's go ahead and throw some ribs on here. Got my little nice spice secret seasoning on here. Looks like we're going to be able to fit about a slab and a half of ribs on here, utilizing the main rack and then the little rack above. And we're going to just go ahead and close it all up, lock it down, and uh, let it start smoking. Set it and forget it, right? Something like that. Around every hour or so, I will uh, take a... Uh, my little spritzer bottle full of apple juice and I'll just go ahead and spray down the ribs. You know, I mean, some other people do things differently, but uh, I, I tend to like this the best. So just go ahead and give it a few sprays, and get them nice and wet, and then I'll go ahead and close it and uh, start it all over again. Like I said, about every hour. It keeps the ribs from drying out a little bit there. So I did not do any injection on these ribs. After I'm done giving a little bit of a spritz, I'm going to go ahead and check my hopper here. Um, looks like I could just push these down a little bit. I think there will be enough for the remainder of this uh, smoke. So let's go ahead and close it up and let it continue going. Uh, Japan's still collecting some stuff too. <laughs> well, it looks like uh, Bear is uh, keeping an eye on the smoker. So looks like he wants some ribs. Now that the ribs have been in the smoker for about three hours, I'm going to use some of this parquet butter. Let's make sure it's squeeze butter. And I'm going to squeeze it over some brown sugar. Now, this is just random. I just squeezed it. I did not make anyone's name or something. I was accused that by the wife and kids. Kind of looks like rue or rule or rut, rut or something. Well, anyways, then what you're going to do, if you have it, you can also use some honey. Um, and put it on there as well. Um, so I, what I did was I just put some on there and then uh, 
what we're going to do after that is put the ribs upside down on this brown sugar and butter mixture and then we're going to put it back on the smoker for about another hour and a half to two hours at a low temperature at like 200 degrees so let's go ahead and get this wrapped up and get it put on Meat probe is in. Let's go ahead and lock it up and now we wait. I know the temperature says 230 but I'm decreasing that temperature down. So Oh look at that. These came out fantastic. Juicy, off the bone, delicious. Yes. Amazing. So what we did also, we did a pork shoulder. This is uh, eight and a half pounds. Um, as you can see, it can fit it rather nice you know, in the pan. And this came out fantastic as well. Now, clean up time. Yeah, this is caked on bad. That was just only after the ribs. And once you remove that uh, shield, yeah, this is all your uh, <laughs> your uh, dust, your charred remains from your pellets. And it gets pretty much all over the place because the fan does blow in there as it's, uh, you know, heating it up. So... Yep, let's go ahead and vacuum it out. Came out pretty nice, but man, it took forever to scrub this. I would suggest if you're only going to use this as a smoker, you know what, just foil it. Put foil on it and then let it drain. I mean, it's it's really not, it takes too long. So here's one of the problems I have with this. This has like a felt seal on it. I don't get it at all. Why would you use a felt seal? It, uh, it just degrades and it just looks horrible but you know that that's one major complaint I have about it it should have been like a rubber seal or something around it or maybe not even a seal at all I don't know but it's that doesn't make sense to me that you would use a felt seal around it and yeah look at the back that's the back and one last doesn't. thing the display kind of gets washed out during the sunlight you can't really read it but uh, it's not that much of a deal breaker well, it is compact. It's relatively small, but this little guy is a beast. I'm telling you, it weighs, it's solid. It weighs a lot. I mean, it's over 40 pounds and it's a, it could be a backbreaker for some. Now I'm a dude with one leg and it's pretty difficult for me. It might not be a deal breaker for some. I think this is ideal for a uh, person that's a uh, um, wants to smoke small amounts of meat or has a small family or individual that lives by themselves or the outdoors type. But if you are outdoors, remember this is purely electric and you'll need to have a electrical source of wherever you're at. So there's no other options for that. And um, what I also like to note is that when we're cooking the pork shoulder that um, it was kind of windy and it blew out the igniter repeatedly. So we had to uh, um, basically create a barricade around it. So I would say anything above maybe 10 mile an hour winds, you're gonna have a difficult time smoking, but we were able to pull it off. Now, A Smoke is not hiding anything with their advertisements. It does what it says it does. Um, the space in there is what I want to ensure that you got a perspective of how much space is in there. I think that's key, right? They say it has a, a you know, inches of surface area, right? But what does that mean? So as, as when I decided to do my demonstration, I figured ribs would probably be the best. I was able to fit a rack and a half of ribs on there, utilizing that small little top rack, and that was it. That's all I could fit. Pork shoulder, I think up to about 12, maybe 13 pounds. The pork shoulder that I uh, smoked was eight and a half pounds, and still had plenty of room. So the hopper did last all day, over eight hours on 225 degrees. Um, you still may want to check it definitely every so often make sure that uh, because it's a mound and you may have to scoop some in or move some into the hopper itself always keep an eye on it um, otherwise i think this machine performed very well i as i always say um you know, while watching a movie i don't want my time back if it's a, that means it's a good movie or decent enough um for this i'm not going to request my money back i think it's suits its needs. I think it did a really good job. I think it's engineered very well. I like the fact that 
the, um, all the screws were pre-inserted. I didn't have to worry about any screw bags. I just back out the screws and screw on the parts. I think manufacturers should take a lesson from that. Great idea. Great idea. I don't understand why more don't do that. Um, but otherwise, I, it's, I think it's highly recommended. So I really appreciate you tuning in to Tripod's Garage. Have a pleasant day, weekend, or whenever you decide to watch that, this video. And please like and subscribe. And we'll see you the next time. Thank you.